thank you for the introduction. Um, nice announcement or nice uh, intro to my talk. I'm going to talk about the communication being the biggest bottleneck here and how we try to reduce the communication that we have, in our case, using lookup tables. This is joint work with Garda Tesuki, Farinas Kushanfar, Amatriza Zadegi, Shaza Zaituni, and my advisor, Thomas Schneider. Yes. Um, we've heard about it from in the last talk. In secure two-party computation, we have two parties, Alice and Bob, with an input X and Y, and these two parties want to evaluate a public function F on their input so that they only get a result, but revealing no information about their inputs. As a little toy example, there is this classical Yao's millionaires problem where Alice and Bob want to compare whom of them is richer. And they simply input how much money they have and get as a result whom of them is richer with, without revealing their bank account data or whatsoever. And in this work explicitly, I'm gonna focus on the semi-honest case. So um, as was told in the last two talks, in this case we have an adversary that does not deviate from the protocol, but he tries to learn as much information as possible. If you go away from this little toy example where we have two millionaires who want to compare their wealth, and secure computation has actually been used for quite some, some applications out there. One example is the example of um, sugar beet auctions, which is used in Dan Denmark. So on, on the one hand, we have the sugar beet farmers, on the other hand, we have big companies who want to buy sugar beets. And they engage in a, a secure two-party computation protocol in order to establish a contract that determines how many sugar beets are sold and to what price these sugar beets are sold. As a next application, we have um, privacy-preserving face recognition, we have, where we have on the one side a camera with a face sample and the database of faces on the other side, and the camera wants to see whether or Alice wants to see whether the face sample is in a database of users. So say for instance, you want to determine whether a specific face is in the list of a terrorist database or something. Another example is this privacy preserving a yes that we just heard about, where one party has a message, the other party has a key, and the party with the message gets the encrypted message under the key of the second party. And the variant of this is actually sold as a hardware security module by Dyadic Security. Finally, we have the stable magic application where the two parties hold a list of um, participants and each participant has a ranking, a priority, so to say. And the secure computation protocol is just there to, say, satisfy the overall happiness. So you want to compute a matching where all the participants in this matching are happy. If you want to start implementing your own secure computation application that you have, a good starting point are these generic secure techniques. One is the Aos Gabel Circuits protocol, which we heard about in the last talk, and another one is the GMW protocol. And how these protocols work is they, or how you would do it, is you would take your function and represent it as a Boolean circuit. In secure computation, we have some tricks every now and then so that you get the exhaust for free and the end gates you have to pay in symmetric crypto operations such as AES or end communication. So what really matters here is the number of end gates we have in the circuit. The difference between these two protocols, between the GMW protocol and Yaos Garbon circuits is the round complexity. So for Yaos Garbon circuits, it's constant round. You send a lot of data at one point and the other party does the computation. While for the GMW protocol, you have to perform interaction for each end gate it means that you perform a number of communication rounds that is linear in the number of in the end layers, so to say, because you can batch communication for ends on the same layer. Now, as we've seen from the last talk, secure computation has had a lot of, or practical secure computation has gained a lot of attention. And over the past 10 years, we've seen an incredible amount of speed that has come from uh, starting 2004 with 600 end gate per second to 3 million end gates per second, which current secure computation implementations can actually handle. And just to give you a rough idea, 3 million end gates means that we generate around a gigabyte of data or a gigabit of data per second and per thread. 
in fact, um, using only or when only looking at local computation, we can generate gigabits of data. So much more data than we can actually send over the network. And this is where we get some problems. In recent works, we have seen that we've reached a lower bound on the communication of end gates, which means that we would need radically different schemes for Yao's garbage circuits at least in order to get less communication. On, for GMW, on the other hand, the runtime is mostly dominated by the latency. Since you have to perform so many interaction rounds, as soon as you go to an internet setting, you will just wait for the messages. So a natural question to ask is whether we can move from the small end gates, small Boolean circuits, to bigger components, such as lookup tables. And this is the focus of our talk, or of the remainder of this talk. First, I'm gonna present you uh, two very simple lookup table or give you the intuition about our lookup table protocols. Then I'm gonna show you the tool support that we enabled in order to compile high-level functionalities into these lookup table circuits. And finally, I'm gonna give you an overview about the comparison and how these Boolean circuit protocols compare to the lookup table-based protocols. And in the paper, which I exclude from this presentation, we do a bit of uh, showing how to instantiate the underlying primitives more efficiently and how to reduce the communication for GMW. So let's first get into these lookup table protocols. And our key building block for these protocols is the one out of N oblivious transfer protocol, which we heard about in the first talk of the session. So it all builds up very nicely. I'm really happy to uh, be in this spot, honestly. Um, and the one out of N oblivious transfer, as, as we've just heard, we have Alice with N messages and Bob who wants to obtain one of these N messages. They want to do it in such a way that Alice does not learn with which message Bob has chosen and Bob does not learn any message besides the one he selected. And the protocol that is most efficient in this case is this KK13 one out of NOT, which is really nice because it um, scales very well if you increase N. So the rough intuition behind our protocols um, is that we have one party prepare a lookup table and the second party determine um, via some local computations which row to access in this lookup tables. And then we use oblivious transfer in order to do the lookup table or the lookup for the table. Um, Keep in mind that this, this is only the intuition. This is not secure. This will probably, well, this will break. Um, you need to add a bit of operation and steps and so on, but I'm gonna exclude this because the talk is a bit short. If you uh, want the details, you can read them up in the paper. So from this rough idea, we developed two different protocols. One is the um, online phase load protocol, and the second is the setup phase load protocol or lookup table based protocol. In this OP load protocol, we try to optimize the online phase. Um, we saw in the last talk that you can do a lot of pre-processing function, independent pre-processing, and have a very efficient online phase later on when you have the inputs. And this is the idea of this OP load protocol. You want to pre-compute as much data as possible to have a very efficient online ev evaluation once you have the inputs. This, however, has a larger overall complexity, and this is the reason for our second protocol, this SP load protocol. The idea here is to have less complexity overall at the cost of a, a more expensive online phase. So this would be the case if the parties wouldn't know each other beforehand or if you couldn't do any pre-computation. And here in the two graphs, we see the two protocols compared, and as well as for the number of inputs. And what you can definitely see is that at some point, the complexity will start increasing exponentially. So we only have a certain number of inputs to which this will actually be efficient. Um, now I'll come to the generating these lookup table-based protocols and the work that we did there. So we want to start from a high-level description and then compile this high-level description into a circuit of lookup tables. And what we have observed is that um, FPGA synthesis tools actually do the job that we want minus some um, small specifics. In our case, the FPGA synthesis tools compile from a high-level description 
down to lookup tables. However, this is a bit restricted since they only can do up to lookup tables with six input and one outputs. So have, we have to start um, doing a bit of post-processing. And one of the post-processing steps that we do is combine, uh, combining multiple lookup tables. So if we see that we have an overlapping set of inputs for multiple lookup tables, we just merge them together. And in addition, also the output, uh, output buyers. And in this fashion, we are able to reduce the communication that we have to do in order to evaluate this functionality. A second post-processing step that we do is extract XOR grades. Similar to UAS Global Circuits and the GMW protocol, we can actually evaluate XOR gates for free, meaning that we can get them out of the lookup tables and then simply do some uh, XOR operations on them in the, uh, locally and thereby gain lookup tables that have a smaller number of inputs and are more efficient to evaluate. Now I'll come to the last part of my presentation, namely the comparison and evaluation. And this is a bit of a problem here because um, it's not always clear what the most efficient Boolean circuit rep representation of a functionality is. Actually, this is an MP hard problem. So if I give you a function, it is very hard for you, or it is very hard to get a circuit which has the minimal number of end gates. And so the, com the comparison that we do here has to be a bit, or is a bit uh, bigger. And we're kind of comparing apples to oranges. Um, so what we did was we just took a lot of different standard primitives, like um, in this case, the addition, comparison with greater than, floating point operations, the S box, and so on, and multiplication also. And first we compared the communication. So in blue here, or in the figures you can see on the x-axis the different operations, and on the y-axis the communication in kilobytes for these operations. Yaos Gobble circuits in blue, GMW green, the OP load and SP load protocols are in blue, uh, yellow and red. The overall picture is that most of the time this SP load protocol has less communication than GMW, which has less communication than the OP load protocol, which overall has less communication than Yaos Gobble circuits. So, yeah, Yaos Gobble circuit has the most communication most of the time. The exceptions are the ripple carry addition, the greater than sequential operation, which is similar to the ripple carry addition, and the multiplication. And the reason for that is that these circuits have a very particular structure, namely they have, a, they have gates, so to say, they have these uh, full adder structures where you have three inputs and one or two outputs and are very efficiently representable as Boolean circuits, but not as much as a lookup table based circuit. If we instead look, instead of having these, um, these full letter based constructions, if we look at a more parallel or tree based construction, we can see that our lookup table protocols actually do much better on these ones, simply because it's easier for them to process mul multiple input at, inputs at once and get the output from that. In a similar fashion, we compare the number of interaction rounds that we have to perform. And in this case, we exclude Yao's garbage circuits simply because it's a constant round protocol, meaning that it has zero communication rounds for, for these operations anyway. What we can see here again is that GMW has the most communication rounds, the OP load has less communication rounds than GMW, and our SP load protocol has the smallest number of communication rounds, which is simply due to the fact that our SP load protocol scales much better than for number of inputs than our OP load protocol. And the exception here is again the multiplication with triple carry addition, simply because of this triple carry based structure or the full adder based structure. Finally, we implemented and compared our protocols on the AS functionality in a LAN and a WAN setting. So our LAN setting consists of a gigabit network and our WAN setting consists of a, uh, a network where we say we have two cloud providers on different continents that want to do the uh, secure computation and which are separated by legal restrictions and so on. What we can see is that our lookup table based protocols don't do so well in LAN simply because they have a higher computational overhead and these Boolean circuit based protocols are really 
very efficiently to be parallelizable. So a thousand AS operations for them can very efficiently be parallelized since it's only operations on bits. If you move to the wide area network instead, we can see that the runtime scales with the communication, meaning that our SP load protocol, or, well, it follows the communication essentially. So to conclude my talk, what we did was we um, looked at this bottleneck in secure computation that we had, namely the communication, and developed lookup ba table based protocols that work on this one out of n oblivious transfer primitive. We then developed a tool chain in order to compile high level functionalities into this lookup table circuit and showed that for some functionalities, these lookup table based circuits actually achieve much better communication than the Boolean circuits. That's it from my side, and I'm happy to take your questions. <laughs>